The cities in this country are using electricity and using energy at a rate that is unprecedented. The primary energy source that we use in the built environment outside of the transportation sector is coal. Coal is a filthy energy source. When we burn it, it releases carbon emissions into the air that are very problematic for the ozone layer and are associated with global warming and climactic change. Coal also has to be transported long distances so that we're then burning doubly the amount of fossil fuels in order to bring coal to the places in which we use it. Uh, my name is Trey Taylor, and I am co-founder and president of Verdon Power. The best way to describe uh, Verdon Power's mission is the notion of sustainable economic development. The cornerstone of sustainable economic development is renewable energy. One of the greatest sources of renewable energy is moving water. How might we tap that resource to make a contribution to the renewable energy mix? seeing this is just a testing the rotor so we're testing its movement it's not hanging up the water will turn a little slower than that these turbines work much like wind turbines it's the basic function of a sweep of the blade this rotor that turns in the current of the water that turbine as it turns drives a generator inside of the body of the turbine. The, they're going to be cabled up. Power is brought to shore into this control room. This is where everything happens. This is where we're wired up to the turbines. There's lots of questions about whether or not these turbines will hurt fish, but they turn at about 32 RPMs, which is very, very slow. And fish have lots of room to swim around them or over or under them. The value of water is that it moves. And then when it moves, it has the potential to create energy. Certain forms of hydro, like large dams, um, can create massive ecological dislocation. Using run of the river types of technologies where a turbine is spun, those have much, much lower impacts. The underwater turbines in the East River, that's really cool. We've got some amazing currents, you know, in New York City. And that's what I think the Green Movement has been trying to do. It's like, use what is already available and turn that into something that's actually useful. In a few minutes, we're about to put in the very first turbine. We're going to be making history with this turbine going into the water. <laughs> I'm going to feel very excited. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that everything works and that, you know, it, it works well. This is all the way on the bottom, right? Hey, this is Rolf. What's up? We just lost the data from the turbine. How much, um... Chris, stand by. We, we don't have the data. I mean, at, at some point, we're going to lose still, the time, but yeah, that's uh, the wire just stand by the is the best I can say. I just turned around and next thing I knew was um, we didn't have any data. Yeah, we have a uh, slight issue with the uh, data acquisition system. So we're restarting computers and checking wires and checking power. Uh, maybe the, uh, the switch. Are these the lights that are usually on? Do you know, Hannah? OK, oh, so we're up. Okay, so, they, we well, got da we have data linked now. Good, we're good. It's a computer Go ahead. issue. Reset the computer. We had a little bit of a computer error, and it's always it's always suspenseful. But they got to figure it out real quickly, and that's what got resolved. for the divers to come up and give us a thumbs up that it's secured. Everything went incredibly smoothly, just a little suspense thanks to computers. 
So if this is our flight at Kitty Hawk, uh, we went further than 300 yards, didn't we? <laughs> to me, the most exciting part was uh, not even when the turbine hit the water and went into the water, but when the slings came up with no turbine on them. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we figured if we can make it in New York, we can make it anywhere. And so, as that old song goes, that's why we're here. Transportation itself is about a third of the energy we use in the US. And cars and trucks are about half of that. So if everybody in cities stopped using it, that would be about 5% of all of our energy use. It's a big number. That's more energy than most countries on the planet use. There are some serious transportation constraints in South Waterfront. It's this narrow sliver of land that runs north-south. Uh, we're essentially blocked to the west by the I-5 freeway. And so if we were to strictly rely on the surface streets to support the level of development down here, we'd be doomed. Mass transit is always a more energy-conserving option for getting people around. You have the streetcar, which gives you that direct link to downtown. And the tram connects the, uh, what will be the lower campus, Oregon Health Sciences University, with the uh, upper campus, where historically OHSU has been located. Both the streetcar and the tram are electric. And the tram is remarkable, because the car that's coming down generates electricity while you're expending energy for the car that's going up. So the two help offset each other. My first ride on the tram was very exciting. When it goes over that intermediate tower, there's a bit of an aha. <laughs> After that, you get used to it. It's a grand ride, and the, uh, the views are just stunning. It's kind of amazing. What used to be a 20-minute ride by car can be accomplished in about three minutes. It's going to lower a lot of traffic. I actually have been paying $10 a day to drive my car. My personal hope for South Waterfront is that this truly does become a model of a well-intended community. And that's, that's the really exciting part. That's what really uh, gets me going. I think the city of tomorrow will look at least from space, pretty much like the city of today. I think they will be more intelligently laid out. I think we'll see a lot more green. The most important thing that anybody can do in terms of being a part you know, of this environment is recognizing that they are part of it. Even though I'm not Christian, I embrace the biblical notion that we could be stewards of this earth, and I feel that my life is improved by adopting it as sort of serving nature as opposed to trying to master it. In our cities, it's easy to adapt the, to the illusion that we're somehow special and different. We're not. We are created out of the elements of the earth, the earth, air, fire, and water. The question about whether or not we move forward or not with renewable energy, I would say there is no alternative to this. This has got to be the answer. And it has to be a commitment to making that happen. We can all be involved in fixing this problem. We all should be involved. It isn't just about building the bricks and sticks. It's also about what I like to call the software of community, the people side. I think we're on the leading edge of, of really incredibly exciting changes that are taking place. <laughs>